Jerry, just so we're clear, you're still in public comment. I haven't recessed. We're still taking notes. That has just been pointed out. So we're still in um, session. Thank no you, Madam recess. Presiding Officer. I was a little confused. I thought we were going into the full ledge and then public comment. That's all right. Better walk this way. We just did it. Okay. Oh, you did it at the ledge? That's why I wanted to get through it so that great. you guys could speak. Exactly. Very good. Thank you. Well, um, I'm here to speak and represent approximately 7,000 Nassau County workers that are in the C uh, CSCA Local 830 here in Nassau County, and also to represent the residents of, C of uh, Nassau County, which, by the way, our, our union workforce are both. They are both the residents, taxpayers, and the workers of this county. So in these tough economic times, it is our members that are being hit twice, basically, because we're being asked to, as, as the county executive said, do less with less, and at the same time, we are being hit with the economic crunch ourselves. It's very important that this legislation know that the CSCA membership with an average salary of $46,000 a year is having a hard time making ends meet today on a full salary. We have many members today that are already enrolled in public assistance. We've had members that have already foreclosed on their homes, and that's without any cut in pay or any deferral or, fur or furlough. Um, I'll thank you for taking the layoffs off the agenda today. As you know, uh, CSCA and other unions have joined with the county executive to see if there's any way we can come up to an agreement and prevent layoffs. To me, layoffs are the absolute uh, worst scenario for both the county, the residents, and of course the membership. Um, we need at least two weeks to see if we can come to that agreement. If we can, that's fine. Uh, my members will get a chance to uh, hear what the proposal is and uh, we'll put it out and let them vote on it. Uh, but I, it should be noted that this union is here and we've come to the table to speak with the county executive. We have not turned our back on Nassau County uh, and the residents. And I do have to say that I want to stop that image from being portrayed out there. This is not the residents versus the union worker. It's a very important message for me to get across because somehow that's the way it's being portrayed. Um, the other resolution that's on <laughs> the other resolution that's on today's agenda will give the county executive the ability to close Nassau County. That sounds absurd. It is absurd. How do you close a county? According to the county charter, I believe. Uh, departments must be open Monday through Friday for a designated time unless there's a legal holiday or a natural disaster, such as a weather event. Under the resolution you will be passing, if you do, you will be giving a broad power to the county executive to close this county. And we absolutely do not support that because, number one, we are one of the largest counties in this country. Our taxes are one of the highest in this country. And to think that we would actually close this county and close some areas as DSS, where moms go there for formula for their children. Um, old Bethpage uh, Village Restoration, where our children in school are taught all year long about the history and the culture of this county. That's one of the, the jewels of Nassau County. What kind of a county, what kind of a message are we prepared to send out there when we are looking to close departments that offer services to our residents, which, by the way, have been severely cut already because of years of budgetary cutbacks. This is not the first time we're speaking about a deficit or we're speaking about uh, a hiring freeze or staffing reduction. This has been going on for quite a while now. Almost every department in this county is working on a skeletal crew. Layoffs won't save you money. Layoffs will cost you money, as they did in 1992. In fact, settling some cases, and I know members, members who were illegally laid off in 1992 were paid hundreds of thousands of dollars by, by a court because it was done improperly. So I need this legislature to really look at their own consciences and decide really where we are. Understand that the unions, especially CSA, because that's who I represent, are here to try to solve the problem. We are not part of the problem, but we will be part of the solution. Not a single county worker has caused this 
disaster that we're looking at. It's a national crisis. It's a statewide crisis. <laughs> and for sure, it's a county crisis. We understand. We're willing to do our part. But do not allow this county to close. And do not think of laying off our members. Because all you'll be doing is adding to the ranks of social assistance, public assistance, foreclosures, and despair. We have to make sure, and I said this last time and I'll say it again, we have to make sure as the legislators here, you need to ensure that all means of raising revenue and collecting taxes are exhausted. And I do not believe that's been done. I believe that there's literally hundreds of millions of dollars hanging out there. We've spoken about it with the tax issue, and I will continue to speak about it because this county is the only county in New York State which does not collect refunds from the municipalities and special districts to the tune of between 50 and 100 billion dollars a year. And that's shameful considering what's on the agenda today. It really is a shameful act. And I need that. To Taxes, believe me, I'm, I'm, I have to share the same exact tax bill as my neighbor, but I understand that there's another piece of legislation coming up for fuel tax. Obviously, uh, once again, the residents will have to uh, pay some more money for services. I think at this time, if we're going to really share the pain across the board with union workforce and residents alike, the county executive needs to try to push that tax hike through, and the legislators need to support that in order to keep this county solvent. It cannot all rest on the backs of your workforce. We don't make enough money, folks. So I'll leave you with this message that we are told we have approximately two weeks to come to terms with the county executive. We will be there. Our, our minds wide open with our members' interest and the residents' interest at the forefront. But, it, but I want you to understand that if it does not work out, if we cannot come to an agreement, we will be back here in force and we're going to watch every legislator that votes for layoffs. And we're going to watch every legislator that votes to close this county. And trust me, we're going to watch close. behind you and I think you're right you know that uh, it's time that we stop going after the low paid workers yeah. I remember, uh, a government worker I was a union worker and I remember way back in the mid 80s uh, faced with layoffs you know in the phone company and um, for me, it was, it was okay because I, at that time I was married and I did have the income from my husband. But I remember looking at so many other people who were heads of high households and they had families and a lot of these men, the look in their eyes trying to figure out how are they going to go home and tell their families that they would not be able to live with their living, they would not be able to have the life that they were living, you know, had. And for me, that always uh, stayed within my heart. And in my and with my within my soul as well. And I think that, that I think that as we make these decisions, that people who are making decisions that are going to impact your lives should have walked a mile in your shoes first before they say yes or no. understand that recently, on top of all the other things that we're supposed to look at as far as cuts and salary cuts and uh, basically looking to open up our contract, which is probably not going to happen, not going to happen, not probably. But I understand there's been two RFPs put out recently by this county. One to privatize our sewer districts and one to privatize our ambulance bureau. And we are really, really stretching how far our patients can go here. 
because now it is starting to look like this union's under attack. So I just wanted to let you know now, in case you didn't, well, not aware of that, that we cannot allow our ambulance bureau that actually made us money last year, $18 million was put in, to be taken over by another private entity from North Shore. We will not stand for that. Okay. And, our prior, and our sewer treatment plants, which, by the way, this union was very, very important in helping Tom Swazi get the Sewer and Stormwater Authority just a few years ago. Our guys do a fantastic job over there. So on top of everything else, we're going to have to come back to you and put some sense into this decision. And we hope that we have your support on those very two very important issues, along with everything else I said. And I thank you for your time. And uh, good luck. You know, I'm, I, I'll repeat myself again. You know, I said to my colleagues here, I've been here in 1987, and I've seen the same kind of human cry because the county was in trouble. Women and children coming down with their babies and asking, begging the Board of Supervisors not to lay them off. I said it's not a nice sight to see. The workers were attacked. We had 1,200 folks in the parks, down to 300 and some odd. I don't want to see that again. This county, by law, there is close to $100 million that this county has by law. And this body refuses to address this issue. And I'm not going to complicate the issue, but it's making the special districts whole. For 35 years, this county has been in violation of the law. And they're hiding behind this. They like to criticize me if there's a tax cert in Westbury. They'll vote with me just to teach me a lesson. And I keep telling them, look, I don't know any brothers or sisters that got a hundred million dollars or a hundred uh, or a million dollars that live in my district. If, if, I, if, if they did live in my district, I'd like to know who they are. But they're playing the politics with it because they don't want to deal with your school districts, they don't want to deal with your sewer districts, your towns, etc. The law is the law. And I told them that you're going to be faced with voting to lay county workers off and have 1.3 million people teed off at you versus 20,000 in a school district. I will not go that way. I think this county needs to step up to the plate and I don't know why the Attorney General has not really uh, 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 come back to this county and say yes, the law is the law. If we're in violation of a state law which supersedes county law, ladies and gentlemen, if we're in violation, they fine the county, and they fine them through your sales tax. And this law, which the late Montiata and the late Ralph Marino attempted to get Nassau County exempt for, from it. In 1974, the young governor, Hugh Carey, and Mario Promo, the lieutenant governor, summarily vetoed that law. I gave copies to the union leaders. We don't have to go this route. And if the smaller districts are, are getting tax certs, then we should not make them whole because the law says you can't do it. And we paid close to $100 million last year. That's your money. Now, we can turn a blind eye. You can turn a blind eye, but you're going to be faced with the same thing this year and next year. And the last thing I'll say, you know, some of them say, well, you got to phase it in. you got to do it. Did anybody in here vote on the school budget yet? Absolutely not. The budgets don't come out until May. You all, everybody votes on it the same day. You tell the, the, the school districts and the special district, the party is over. And as my good friend, uh, Denise Ford said to me, I opened up a can of worms. No, I said I opened up a can of caviar because the rich have been eating off the poor folks. And the man <laughs> Those two RFPs you mentioned, I've been informed there's enough to privatize, uh, to, to privatize, the net result will be to privatize the auto mechanics that have been recently consolidated because they can't get parts uh, or anything to do their job, so they're going to come and say, well, we need to buy this, or you get it done over here because it's not getting done in our own shop. That, that one's out there too. 
I'm a little confused today because I didn't hear until just this morning when they when the majority came out that they have pulled the resolution authorizing the county executive for layoffs off of the calendar. I'm glad that they did that, but I've just been reading through County Executive Swazi's speech and press release, and he outlined these very dire circumstances, and he listed a three-part solution. And he said, we need to do this on Medicaid to get $50 million. That's coming from Washington, he believes, not he yet, he believes. We need to do this in the state, red light cameras, ticket surcharges, or cigarette taxes, or we have to cut all these youth programs, senior citizens, and aid to the villages, and drug and alcohol, and put a heating oil, or a heating tax on oil, and propane, and gas, and firewood, and electric on our residents. And then he said we have to have a 26-day county shutdown and union layoffs, or a 7% pay cut across the board. Now, I agree with you, and I appreciate the fact that you and the other unions have, are, have indicated a willingness to work with the administration to achieve savings, whether whatever form or shape they ultimately take, however much they ultimately are, is by law a matter to be negotiated by the union heads and the county executive. What I fail to understand is that if the county executive thinks that there's a production to be made uh, by negotiating with the unions over the next two weeks and they're pulling that part of the program off the table, then I don't understand why we're not pulling the other parts of the program off the table. Yeah. My county executive's people are not in Albany, which is in session, and after all, you know, the governor, the Senate, the Assembly, all, all, all the same political faith as the county executive, why he can't get up there and, and get his package through. I don't know what's going on up there. And, and yet he's asking, and apparently we're going to vote today, on these deep program cuts and eliminations, his words, not mine, and apparently we're going to go forward and give him the authorization to vote to close the county on 26 consecutive days this afternoon. Now, I've read the legislation, and if, if, if the legislation passes the way it's written to give him the authority to cut the programs, and the state legislature acts, he still has the authority to cut the programs. If the legislation is passed to authorize him to close down the county for 26 days, and you reach some type of, a, of an accommodation wherein there are savings achieved, he still has the authorization to cut down, to cut the county 26 days without coming back here and without talking to us. So I believe if we're going to delay, and I think the delay is prudent, I think if we're going to delay for two weeks, we should delay the whole thing. I am very suspicious of this. caucus after normally as you know we have public comment and we have the legislature then there's a break and we go into committees where these items will be heard we had intended to caucus prior to the committee uh, so that we can achieve our common position on this we all have a lot of questions we all have a lot of concerns but now it's all been turned around which they can do because they're in charge it's fine but we're going to caucus as a as a group right after the public comment is is finished and, and first we have to find out exactly what is still on the calendar and what is not, and and then go forward from there. And I'll be speaking to you uh, right right after that. Thank you. Let's say Legislative Court. Legislative Court. Thank you. I'll go right to Roger. Yeah, um, Terry. Uh, let me let me just uh, say something. You know, this is not a partisan problem. This is a human problem. It's not Democrat, it's not Republican. It's a human problem. Back in 1968, when the Board of Supervisors controlled this county, they were all Republicans. I'm not gonna say that, but they were. And they voted for that energy tax, every last one of them. So this is not like the Democrats want to slip this in and the Republicans don't. Their, their head of their party now was part of that with Alphonse D'Amato, voted for it in 1968. And that's, that's evident. But, we're not going to bicker about this because what we want to do is resolve the problem. We don't want to piecemeal. We want to resolve the problem so our residents, our county workers who are underpaid, do not have to come back in here begging like they're some paupers. And I, 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 resent, I resent this county 
for really putting you in this position. Like I said, there's a hundred, y'all get the same. I'll say it one more time, I'll say it loud and clear. There's a hundred million dollars in the kitty right now, and we don't have to go through this. But you, if you guys want to protect your little precious districts, sanitation, your towns, your school districts, then act like they're not getting anything. They're getting paid twice, and it's on your backs that this body is going to be confronted with closing the county down, laying you off. I resent that, and I think we need to do something about it today. Jerry, I can't, first of all, I can't compliment you enough on, on what you just said, because you really, you went down the entire problem. You have your membership, this concept of starting at the bottom and letting the people at the bottom feel the pain first, just should never cut it. But you also say, look, you understand that a budget is a plan, and it's a plan of where the expenditures go, and it, it's a plan of where the revenue comes from. Now, it, se it seems like for the last almost 20 years, the county worker has been under siege. It started in 91, 92, when a revenue issue, and the Board of Supervisors rejected a uh, property tax proposed at the time by the county executive. Next thing you know, workers are laid off. And it always seemed like the bottom is where the cuts happen first. In 99, 2000, we walked into a legislature where the social service groups, our, our youth board, our mental health and drug and alcohol agencies were cut by 50% because the tax was revealed. <laughs> you got to be balanced. You can't clap someone who's telling you that he wants everything off the table today, including an extension of the sales tax, which would bring in over $30 million a year of revenue that could prevent us from being under siege year after year and you having to come down here year after year. This extension of the sales tax revenue, which is on the table today, is something that's a sales tax that's, that's in Suffolk. It's on, it's on energy-related items, whether it's electricity. No one wants to say to consider raising taxes, but should we take off a revenue enhancement today and not consider that because we wanted to take off the layoffs? because we think that's premature, premature to even consider letting anyone go without trying to get more revenue in to save the jobs and to save the services? I say no. I say let's consider the revenue enhancement. Let's consider it today, but let's not consider layoffs today. Let's protect the jobs today, and let's try to protect the You don't have to say that they're to take off the revenue enhancement. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just going to make one quick comment. Legislator Denenberg obviously did not listen when I spoke, and you didn't listen when County Executive Swazi spoke two weeks, a week ago. The sales tax on home no, no, heating no, fuel. No, I will listen. I try not to the listen. Sales tax, no, it's obvious. The sales tax on home heating fuel is County Executive Swazi's solution to the failure to get the $30 million in revenue that was supposed to come from state legislative items that have not yet been approved. We, we spoke out against putting that risky revenue in the budget last October. We told you that that revenue wasn't going to be there, but you guys ignored us and poo-pooed it and rubber-stamped his budget, and now he comes to the collective body and says, oh, we didn't get this $30 million worth of revenue. We have to gut all of the social services in the county and put a heating oil fuel uh, uh, surtax or sales tax on, uh, on, our, uh, on our homeowners. The, those items have nothing to do, according to the county executive, with averting layoffs. Nothing. Zero. That's a separate standalone item. It has to do with the state legislative items not being passed. It's right here in this press release. And we don't know at this stage whether the state legislature is going to approve those items or not. And the legislation says that he has the authority to impose this tax on home heating oil at his whim. 
This is a paragraph to give him the authority to do what he wants to do to tax people without having to be held accountable by the legislature. Schmidt, you want to understand the legislature, Unfortunately, I can count, and it's obvious from your track record here that maybe sometimes one plus one with you doesn't equal two. But a $130 million problem isn't going to be solved by the red light camera issue and a, or the cigarette tax issue, both of which I think you voted against anyway because right. you don't like any revenue enhancement. And you're not a friend to anyone who works for the county if you're going to fight every revenue enhancement. But if it's a $130 million gap, we should at least put through committee a revenue enhancement measure that would count $30 million year after year. It would be crazy not to at least consider that. Well, we could do that, or we could look at cutting patronage first, since there's 30 million dollars. Yeah. regardless of whether or not this county was run by Republicans or Democrats, that the first people that we go to to help balance that budget are union workers. Yes. And I think that, and you know, Legislator Denenberg, I voted for some of those revenue enhancements yeah, because I believe that we need to protect our workers. And you are the guys that we need to protect. <laughs> and my feeling is that if we are really serious about doing this and if we need to make cuts and we need to go after the workers, let's go after the management first. Let that be the Jerry, do you have anything else to say? Oh, thank you very thank much. Thank you, Mark, very much. <laughs>